Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and today, at somebody's request, I'm going to be covering the Nightfinder mod guide. We're going with a nice blue one today, because that was the one on the top of the bin. So, let's crack it open. We're going to do the usual things. Um, K26 upgrade, barrel brass, and air restrictor removal. I am still waiting for the various... Flashlights, I ordered a whole bunch of random ones online to see which one would fit best and then I'm gonna experiment and figure out which one I like and then I'll order those ones in bulk. So, let's open it up and at least do the basic mods. One of the many reasons that the Nightfinder is such a good candidate for this is that the plunger tube is actually screwed in. It's good and secure. Another one where the plunger head comes off, which makes it that much easier. A new coil of K26, because I'm just burning through the stuff. Same deal, cut the spring at the same length as the original. Okay. Plunger head back on. Once again, that is the spring upgrade dealt with. Cat spring on these is actually quite stiff, so I'm not going to worry about that. But we do need to deal with the air restrictor, which in this particular one just comes right out. Then the uh, dart peg also needs to be removed. I'm going to go ahead and dremel it out. And then we need to drill out the barrel. So we're going to move on over to my drill press. A number of people pointed out that it is a bad idea to, to wear gloves when using a rotating tool and they were in fact correct. Um, you run the risk of your gloves getting caught and then your hand getting mangled while you desperately try to break free. So, don't wear gloves when using a rotating tool, children. not entirely centered and so I ended up uh, cutting clean through the side there. Fortunately the brass that we're gonna be putting in will uh, render that particular thing irrelevant. So on to the next step. Once again we will need to use a round rasp in order to bore out the barrel just a little bit more. as the drill bit alone will not quite pour out the barrel enough. Oh. Well, that's irritating. Well, we are just gonna have to deal with that, aren't we? what I'm doing. That uh, hole that got cut while I was drilling out the barrel is in fact visible because of the design of the gun and so I am making it look like I did it on purpose so that it would in fact show off the brass. There. Now you just have a little bit of brass barrel peeking through, and doesn't that look nice? Moving on. <sighs> All right. Good. Good. Covered in dust. What remains is to cut off the barrel, and on this particular blaster, it's not straight, which is ever so irritating, but we can deal with that. 
easily enough. Get it started and then take it to the bench vise. So, get it started, clamp it down, it's all the rest of the way. Okay, so we got it cut, now we just need to clean it up, of course. And one additional step we're going to do this time that I didn't do last time. Somebody mentioned it in a comment and I've been meaning to start doing it on barrels. But I hadn't gotten around to it. Clean it up first. So you can just see how well it works on uh, this angled barrel, but we're going to give it a dry anyway. Is to flare the barrel slightly in order to make it a little bit easier to feed darts. So I'm using this. This is my planishing hammer for those of you who are curious why what a strange looking hammer this is. And it's got a very small ball peen end that happens to fit brass quite nicely. Give it a few. Taps, and it flares the end of the barrel just a little bit, just enough to make it that much easier to feed a bear, uh, a dart in, but not so much as to make it not fit anymore. And there you have it. We can now put the parts back together. That o-ring definitely needs a little bit of Teflon tape. Somebody asked, how do you know how much is the right amount? Um, it's going to be different for every blaster, depending on how worn the original o-ring is. A general rule of thumb is you want it to create a slightly more snug seal, but you don't want it to create too much drag. It doesn't take much. That's just created a slightly better seal, which is slightly better. Okay, get it all put back in. All right, given or that's where it's locked, but I can pull it back that much farther. I could probably actually put a slightly longer K26 on these. I don't know what that would do to actually increase the power or how much it would additionally decrease the life of the blaster, but might be worth looking into. Beautiful. The uh, flared barrel definitely makes it easier to feed darts in, which is really nice. So thank you for bringing that up and reminding me. Luckily, I had the right hammer. All right, there you have it. Beginning to end mod guide on the Nerf Night Finder. Uh, like I said, I am still waiting on flashlights. I'm hoping to do some better flashlights, at which point I will do a mod guide on how I wired that. I'll probably end up wiring in a switch rather than... So right now it's, you know, partial pull, trigger pull, turns on the light, full trigger pull fires. I will probably add a switch somewhere else on the blaster to turn on and off the flashlight. Or maybe a button. Um, something. I'll come up with something. We'll have, I'll experiment. So, there you have it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, put them in the section below. And thank you for watching.